And then this week I got to do a small cover up. I had a client come in who really enjoyed my style of work. She had a small stick and poke that she had done on herself that she wanted to completely get rid of. So we did so by taking a piece of art that she found and turned it into a full tattoo for her in order to get rid of that but give her something new and something that she really loved to look at. So these flowers are really cool to do because it really just showed a positive and a negative to it or like the yin and yang is how I explained it to her and it kind of gave her balance on her arm which looked really cool. I got to tattoo my coworker Eric, also known as E-Rock. He wanted to do his forearm, which we did a lot of cool Viking, kind of Norse mythology work on it, a lot of black work, and did that really grunge style. I really enjoyed doing this piece because I felt like I was really able to capture what I can do as an artist with all my fundamental skills, and then expand from there, and just showing what you can do with just a little bit of black and just knowing the correct usage of your tools. All right, so this was a really cool tattoo that I got to do. Basically, this gentleman came in and he doesn't have a huge amount of tattoo work and what tattoo work he does have is relevant to his family. In this scenario, this is obviously a memorial situation. So this is something that his daughter drew. I think she was like six or so when she drew that. His favorite character or superhero is Superman. And so she drew him a Superman. Consequently, it, it had some resemblance to him as a man. So it was pretty cool that she was able to at that age meld those two things together. Obviously shout out to dad on that one. Definitely that little girl Superman. One of the best things about this tattoo is it was super easy because I just had to take the line work from what this child put together and then by sight look at the coloring that she was able to do and I matched up some colors. Shout out World Famous. They seem to always have the color selection that we need and really simply I just used a liner to run through the lines. I used a relatively large liner, an 18 round liner, FYT. If you don't know, now you know. Use that along with a nine round bug pin liner of theirs, of FYTs. And then I was able to use just an 18 round shader really good tool there I'm also a v2 cartridge from FYT and really just go through the colors dark to light so in all reality this took us about an hour to get done I think I quoted him around two hours potentially to do this we were able to knock it out in just about an hour's worth of tattoo time a little bit lighter on the pocketbook and consequently might have found my specialty children's drawings so if you got a child drawings bring them on down to me because I could definitely do that I'd like to talk about the dandelion tattoo that we did blowing off into the wind. She had birds flying off into the wind on the other side, so we needed something to kind of accentuate the forearms into equality. So done with a seven round liner, I'm coming into a three round liner bug pen. We're using a gray wash um, on the outside to accentuate the dandelion seed. And then we broke it apart on one side to make sure it looked like it was blowing away in the wind. We went with that and uh, it turned out really fun. All right, guys, my name is Christian, an artist over here at Sharky's Paradise. Follow me on Instagram at weare15280 as well as weare1tattoo. So a couple of fun pieces that I really did this week was the Anubis. He's the god of embalming out of Egyptian culture, and I did it on a mortician, which made it really cool. And I tattooed right on the forearm elbow area, like a space filler, and we did that in black and gray with very minimal color. The inks I used was le legendary like always, as well as FYT cartridge. Another really cool one was one that said, stay low, keep your legs moving. And basically what that means is like, stay low key and just keep moving no matter what happens and kind of just stay on your grind. And then I did a C on the wrist. That's always a really cool thing because I'm a lettering specialist. Love doing letters, been doing letters since I was about five years old. Learned how to write graffiti before I learned how to write regular script, which makes it really cool and really personal to me. We chose a script font with like a lot of negative space inside. One of my favorite parts about lettering, especially script lettering and stuff like that, is a matter of having the matching angles, the thick downstrokes with the thin upstrokes, and then adding that negative space in between allows you to have the same line width throughout the entire piece. Just to kind of keep that balance and everything like that. And that was a first timer, so it was great to get done.
So as a permanent makeup artist, I have a lot of questions of people telling me, why should I get permanent makeup? Will it benefit me? The answer to this one really is everyone can benefit from permanent makeup. Even guys, like if you're losing hair, if you just want a little darkness between your eyes and you don't want to see the eyeliner, that's what the lash enhancement's for. What is permanent makeup? Well, permanent makeup, I had to go to schooling for cosmetology and you have to do another 132 hours of permanent makeup training. So with that being said, I offer microblading, which is just the hair strokes within the brows. I do powder brows, I do ombre brows. I also do eyeliner, all sorts of eyeliner. So winged eyeliner, thin eyeliner, lash enhancement, which is just behind the lashes. I also offer lip blushing, so that's permanent lipstick. I do blushing for the cheeks, concealer under the eyes, and I also tattoo freckles. I have a client that's came in for the last few years now and she's really cool. She comes in every few months. She first came to me and wanted some black brows tinted on her and she's got pretty pale skin. I talked her into doing a little bit more, you know, lighter brown to medium brown and she's been really happy with the brow wax and tint. So she's been a constant client of mine. It's really cool to see them come in. So the very, see how it's angled like that? Yeah. All right. See the back portion of the tube, do you see that? See how it's angled up? Stay out of the habit of measuring from the front of the tube to the width of the needle because this back of the tube is what's going to be sitting on the skin on that angle. So that's important to remember because if I'm angled too far, I'm not getting the depth that I need to penetrate to get that. Definitely smells good. I use this like a headlamp. You know, you don't have to stop, but I only did about a quarter of the thing. Exactly. So yeah. now you can, you got three quarters to kind of adjust. If you're feeling comfortable on those long lines, keep doing long lines. Uh, if you're having trouble hitting those marks, shorten them up a little bit. Isn't it more awkward if we're all watching like this? This machine is just a different it's shape. Different. It's different, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get used to. Hey, Spencer. Yeah. Can I see your grapefruit? First one in the books. How's it going you guys? My name is Spencer. I'm one of the apprentices here at Sharky's Paradise. I'm a fresh tattooer. Just did my first few pieces this week. On my best friend Midnight, I tattooed Jake the Dog from Adventure Time, as well as Bemo, and the snail that is the Lich. And honestly, the ankle was one of the more difficult spots to tattoo for your first time, just because it's got a lot of thick skin, and some of it doesn't stretch as easily as other spots of the body, like the arm or the upper leg or something like that. But it was really fun to be able to knock it out and actually get on skin and really learn some of the ins and outs and how to make sure a line is really set make sure that the fundamentals are there because Sharky always says there's a difference between an A and an A plus and then another piece I did this week was a little heart on my mom's left wrist just a little fun cute black work line really fun to knock that out it was super quick that area was a lot easier to tattoo than the ankle just because right here the skin is a lot easier to stretch and plus the piece was a lot more simple but I'm really excited to be on skin and I'm absolutely stoked for you guys to see the art I crank out follow me at Goblin underscore Inc. 999 on Instagram or hit me up at Spencer J. Furman at gmail.com. I'm excited to blow you all away. Hi, I'm Chelsea. I'm a new tattoo artist here at Sharky's Paradise. I did my first tattoos last week. I did a pirate ship silhouette. I also did a bender from Futurama, and I also did the footprint with a Bigfoot in the middle. My husband was my canvas for that. He has a lot of other tattoos, so we just wanted to pick a place that would make it cohesive with the other tattoos that he had. The Bigfoot tattoo was a little bit challenging only because it was my first tattoo in the shop. It was just intimidating. I had all the other tattoo artists kind of helping me out, giving me tidbits. I overcame this challenge by just taking a step back breathing and remembering all the fundamentals that Sharky has taught me and being confident in my work. Last week was a really fun week and if anybody is interested in getting tattooed, my Instagram is Lethally Blonde Tattoos. Hit me up. Uh, my name is Hector Raul Bustos Jr. I have been tattooing for about three years now. Four months ago, I joined Sharky's team here at Sharky's Paradise. 
The first tattoo I did was for Eric. It was a 90s themed uh, Raphael jumping out of a wall. Underneath it would say 90s baby and graffiti. Uh, started with graffiti when I uh, first started with art. That was like back when I was like seven. I had used a nine round liner and a five round liner as well because we were just going to do the line work for that day. Uh, the lines came out really great and I really can't wait until the shading and all that color comes to play as well. The only challenge I had with the aspect of the tattoo was the fact that I've never used a pen machine before to tattoo skin. But after a while, I kind of just got back into the rhythm so I could, you know, properly apply the skills and the practice that Sharky's been teaching me with the grapefruit. At the end of the day, you know, I got my lines in there. Some of them were kind of a little wobbly, but you know, practice makes perfect. Big thanks to Eric for letting me tattoo him for the first time in the shop and giving him an awesome 90s baby tattoo. I had a dude that I met at McDonald's, literally. He liked my tattoos and I gave him one of my cards and he hit me up and he's like, hey man, can I get some work done? So I had done a butterfly on his chest and it was for his uh, most recent album that he just came out with. So it was kind of like him being a cocoon and embracing his new outlook into rap and everything. So I thought that was really cool to, you know, give him his album piece on his chest. The placement was just a little tricky just because we needed to make sure that it was centered with his collarbone because he wanted it right underneath. And uh, Sharky had helped me just a little little bit because he had a ruler that was kind of made for that so that was nice a uh, little help I can't wait to do more tattoos here at Sharky's Paradise my Instagram is at illusions Inc catch me there